start to implement this notion of something either being one or a zero. Indeed, we could just do it over here. You know, so this next demo is actually the result of a progression of demos. It was a few years ago where I had always kind of talked in the abstract about turning light bulbs on as representing one and zero, the presence or lack of electricity. And then just on a whim, I think, before one year's first lecture, drove down the road to Target, big, big. Uh, uh, big store like Walmart and grabbed a few inexpensive desk lamps, the kinds of things that you would like clip onto your shelf in college and Those got like a few light bulbs. Yeah. yeah, these little gooseneck things. And then I just attached them to the lectern or on stage. And then it was actually a great demonstration, I, I thought, um, in retrospect, being able to then literally turn the switches on and off a la transistors on stage and have something very visible, let alone in a big space like this. Right, but CS50 is constantly uh, reinventing itself. Oh, creating so work for often. itself. Yes. <laughs> So these are, yes, our, our binary bulb. So you might recall uh, Ansel Duff, a former advisee of mine and an undergraduate here majoring in engineering sciences, actually built these for us. And the vision was he machined this, this long tube that held eight light bulb sockets. And then we were really on a kick with uh, Hue light bulbs that semester, which right. are these uh, Internet of Things devices where you can actually control them by an API or application programming interface. And you'll see, we also went on Amazon and got these little grade school refrigerator magnets for the ones place, twos place, all the way up to the 128th place. And so you'll see eventually that I can take out an iPad where Ansel wrote some software that talks via Wi Fi to the light bulbs so that our student volunteers can turn the lights on and off. In a pattern. And the other cool thing about having this uh, magnetic tube or magnetic paint on there is that uh, a little bit later on we see a second demo of this where we can sort of magically wipe the place values away. Dramatically wipe and, the place uh, values away. And suddenly we have the hacker edition version <laughs> of the uh, binary bulbs problem. Indeed, which gets some good like woo from, from the audience there. Though, you know, admittedly, I think we actually over engineered the solution, uh, so to speak. Um, whereby this past year we actually reverted to not using hues, but just using old school light bulbs and little toggle switches, which were just so much easier to set up. Um, these things are great when they work, but honestly, setting up the Wi Fi, making sure we had our own private network that all eight light bulbs were on and the iPad was working, it was just so many variables, and just it would be just awful if like that doesn't work in the first few minutes of the class when you're trying to send a message that, hey, look how simple this is. You can't even get it to work. So, but what's great about a demo like this is you don't even need a rig as awesome as the one that Ansel helped put together because you know a lot of schools that might be there's the dramatic uh, <laughs> wipe away. A lot of schools might want to do something like this, um, but it's really easy to do it with just cell phones now, just turning on your fl your flashlight or your uh, or, anything, or an app like that. And that's what I've started doing when traveling and giving little demonstrations like this. It's just much easier than packing. Uh, like three big light bulbs in your your, your suitcase. Yeah, I, don't, I can't imagine getting those three of those lamps through the TSA it would be very easy. No, these days <laughs> no. So three, any form of lights work, or barring that, a piece of chalk and a one and a zero.